Hi again, everybody. I have a message here from Ursula. Dear Ollie, my name is Ursula. I'm 25 years old, 25 year old woman from Poland, and I've been the victim of a narcissistic father and was parentified by mother. I want to I want everyone to hear my story and be mindful of the artistic and religious groups as from my experience. They are the biggest possibilities to find a narcissist. I also want to thank you for a lot of your work. I'm sure you're not much aware of the good you do to other people's lives. And I want to sincerely thank you in the name of all the people who see your videos. My story begins in a family of musicians. My father is a professor in the music academy and my mother was a music teacher in primary school. He was raised by mother who was, he was raised by mother who was giving him anything he wanted and oppressing terribly his sister who was openly told she was totally unwanted by both parents. My father was praised all his life and even when his father wanted to punish him, his mother would successfully stop her husband from doing so. As a child, as a child from a musical family, I was going to music school for 10 years and I was really good playing violin. I was the second best student at school and was playing soloist concerts with Philharmonic Orchestra. When I was 10, I made a mistake literally, literally, literally once. It was the only time I ran out of class. I, I ran out from class that day to go to shop next day to school. That day, my father decided to pick me up from school, but when he arrived, he saw me not coming out of the school, but from a shop. He made such a mess that he actually told me that I'm not his daughter anymore. Out of one class, he made 10 years of trauma for me saying that I'm always running out from class and I'm always lying. He convinced my mother that I was such a terrible daughter that they both didn't talk to me for the next three years. For the next three years, they were only telling me to come for dinner or ask me what time I have to be at school tomorrow. Of course, my father followed with the with a phrase, but don't lie like you always do. At that time, I was in my nine-year-old brain. I decided to always be the best in whatever I do so that my parents accept me. When I was 12 and I was finishing first level of music school, I wasn't sure of myself despite my successes and asked my father who publicly was talking me about, about me as next uh, Pagani if I should go to second level music school. He told me that there's no music future for me and that I shouldn't even bother thinking about it. My heart was so broken that for the next two years I was missing playing the violin. But since then, I always feel that I'm not good enough. I went to French-speaking school and was always best at class, but felt worthless and never good enough. My father didn't even know which year I'm learning. So when I was about to pass my high school exam, he asked me, why the hell did you wear such nice clothes? The only question he was asking me once a year at the end of school, what's your average grade? and then use it to show himself as the father of a talented child. He was always wearing silk, silk suits, but for me, my sister, my mother, he was buying jeans and socks for Christmas for next year. However, he was never short on giving, I'm sorry, he was never short on giving us any money for education just to be seen as a perfect father. Whenever we used up our clothes, shoes, etc., he was always angry and was just saying, didn't I just buy you books before? Now you ask for clothes. You see how much money you cost me? However, in good days, he was laughing and saying to us, you shouldn't ask me for anything. You should order me to do things. At the same time, I was never close with my mother. She was the one, she was the one to cook and provide and clean laundry, but never be a friend to. She seemed to be closed up in her own world, on top of being convinced by my father I'm the worst creature ever. When I was 13 and my sister was eight, by accident I found out about his affair with his first school love whom he met years, he met after years on anniversary high school graduation party. 
I told my mother about this, and that was the breaking point for, for my relation with her. She suddenly became open to my feelings, and what I was saying started to be valuable. I became her best friend, and when I told her about the story with running from class, she was crying and apologized to me. Needless to say that, needless to say that whenever I was trying to explain myself for those last three years, both of my parents were telling me to shut up and that for sure I'm lying again. A few weeks later, after I found out about my father's affair, my mother told my father that she knows he's cheating on her. And that and that's where the hell began. My father was promising to kill us at least, or at least make us homeless, with no money or any rights. He had hit me once, and that was the only time he ever apologized to me, and that was in a very strange situation. After a few months of his romance, he started to have issues with his new woman. He was barely giving us any money to live, and my mother was selling anything she had to give us food. But when I saw how my father is being emotionally destroyed because of his new relationship, as a loving daughter, I told him that he needs to finish this relationship because it destroys him. <clears throat> I said, I don't care if he still loves us at all, and even if I will never see him again. For his sake, he should finish this as it's taking away his health. At that moment, he got so terribly mad that he had thrown a chair beside the wall and shouted me the same way when I was 10. I was almost sure he would kill me. We had nowhere to go, so all I had is to go to school and stay there as long as I could. I was studying like crazy. It was the best in all subjects at school. He was saying to me that I'm mommy's best friend now. But after years, I think that could be true. He was trying to, to separate me and my mother, so he was trying to humiliate her in my eyes. He was telling me about all their sex stuff they had. <coughs> He was even telling me about gynecological infections my mother had and how she was how he was disgusted of her. When he was running what when when I was running away saying that I don't want to hear about this, he would never stop and he would follow me shouting. At the same time, my sister decided to close close in her room and listen to music, not to take any side of family conflict. She was always saying, I don't know anything and I don't want to know. Because of that, she, when she became a bit older, she was easily persuaded by my father and became the golden child. When I was 17, I was suicidal. Studying was very hard for me, knowing that I had to be the very best in everything and having such a bastard at home. I decided that I would either come back to what I always wanted to do, play the violin, or I would kill myself. I went to my ex-music teacher and asked him for private lessons. When I talked to him, I was almost crying as I felt as if I, I was asking him to save my life. He agreed with pleasure and I got a borrowed violin from school. Those lessons made me really happy. For the first time in years, I was running to music school and spending, spending there almost all day until I realized my teacher, that my teacher hadn't seen me more anymore as a 12 year old child, but as a young woman and was touching me in private parts. At first I thought that I must be wrong, but later I obviously got scared. I left the violin and never came back. In the same time that I finished high school and decided that I must run away. I ran away to Dublin but, but got involved in religious circles. Theology itself was giving me lots of support and I could easily say that it saved my life. But when I got, got involved with the people representing the religion, that's when I started to be in trouble. I was 19 and my religious members told me to get a religious marriage in the eyes of God, legally have some, legally have sex and some protection. So I did, but it was just ritual as that man was already married in a civil way and I found out after wedding night. I had nowhere to go so I accepted that but I but felt terribly used. However, after a year, other religious members told me that my ritual marriage was invalid and we didn't have a civil marriage and couldn't have. I also found that my, hus my husband have steal 
stealed around 20,000 euro from his friends, so I escaped from him. I found temporary shelter with those religious members. In the same time, my ex-husband was running after me in the city, saying that I was his and he will drag me back, pulling my hair. He got into the house where I was hiding and convinced those religious people who were helping me that I was one who was ungrateful bitch and they kicked me out. Didn't matter that I had proof that I was the one who was oppressed. Nobody wanted to listen. I was so desperate that I called my father to help me go home. I had nowhere to, to live, nothing to eat. However, he says he understands, but he's buying new furniture for my sister, the golden child, and I must understand that he won't help me. The case was also that in about three months, there was a divorce case on which I was supposed to be a witness. However, I found a good man who donated for me money to come back to Poland once he found out about my situation. I finally was the witness in court, but the judge completely ignored my words and took as a final word taken from out of context recording my father made after provoking my mother. Next three years I spent working in two places and teaching religious classes. However, being involved in religious community, I've been told by women whom I'm teaching how much they were abused in the name of religion. I was showing them real I was showing them real view on religious texts what they have later mentioned to their husbands. That later created hate for me from all the men in the community. I was so overwhelmed by the scale of oppression and hypocrisy that I left the community and was diagnosed with complex PTSD. However, despite two years of therapy, no one ever told me that I am a victim of narcissistic abuse. There's also no information about such things in Polish books or internet. However, there's one thing I'm really worried about. Even during worst moments in Ireland, my mother was not much interested about how I was doing or doing or living at all. Even when I said I'm living with some family who helps me, I never got a proposition to come back home. On top of that, since six months, since six months, I'm in a relationship with a man whom I'm happy with, and here's where the trouble starts. I moved out from the home where I lived with my mother and sister to live with a boyfriend and suddenly I started to be the worst person ever to both my mother, both my sister and my mother. My sister is soon leaving for studies in another city as I was shown as the worst daughter ever for leaving my mother alone and wanting to have a life while being 25 years old. My boyfriend and I have tried to be the best for them both and take them for rides, buy them stuff. But one day I was invited by them for a conversation. I heard that I changed and that they don't recognize me. When I asked about my mistakes, I heard only that I should shut up and that they don't like the way I look at them and that I should have known what I've done. After 30 minutes of saying nothing, they finally told me that when I come home with my boyfriend, I look at them in a bad way. And because of what they hate, and because of that, they hate my boyfriend. My mother basically shouted in my face that she thought we will always live together as I told her when I was 13. I was shocked like never before. I just said I didn't deserve their aggression. I've never done anything wrong. I am highly involved in all expenses and that is such case I will not bring my boyfriend in and they blocked anyway and they blocked any way of contact with us whatsoever. That's when they calmed down and suddenly accepted and pretended nothing happened. Does it mean I have three narcissists in my family, mother, father, and sister? I was sure about my father and sister, but my mother, was I her best friend for those 10 years? My father oppressed us just to have someone to share her abuse with. I am really lost and I feel lost in all my family. Any comments on this subject would be greatly appreciated, Ursula. <clears throat> Let me explain to you your family, Ursula, and what exactly is going on. You see, your father was made into a son husband by his mother. And son husband narcissists 
It's all about them, even worse than other narcissists. It's me, 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 because they never grow up mentally. They constantly have the childlike entitlement. Me, 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 me. And then when they don't have it, they don't get what they want. They throw these tantrums. They accuse you of lying. They accuse you of all sorts of things. And what your father has been able to successfully do to your mother and your sister was enable your mother to create the same side. She created a daughter wife. Much like the son husband is created, your mother is creating a daughter wife friend, a daughter wife best friend. All wrapped into one. Never leave me, 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 me. It's the same fucking dynamic your grandmother set up with your narcissistic father. She made him into a son husband. Your mother's making you into a daughter, be daughter wife best friend. That's, that's the dynamic. And your sister's going to fall right into the same thing. You need to keep... They're doing you a favor. They're doing you a favor by your father not helping you and your mother trying to cut you off and now she wants, no, 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 no. You made your decision. You made your choice. It's like a child who doesn't get his way. They yell, they scream, they have a tantrum, and then they come back with their tail between the legs trying to get that cookie. But they're still trying to get the fucking cookie. You can't go back. You, have, you should have nothing to do with them. Cut any and all contact with them completely because all your family is doing is looking for son husbands and daughter wife best friends. And those are detrimental. So uh, thank you for your thank you for your story. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And again, if you want your story read on the channel, you have a narcissist you'd like to expose or a topic you'd like me to cover, you know what to do with, the, with my email and the PayPal link in the description box. I'll have the video right back to you. This is Ali Matthews. Thanks for watching. See you all again soon.